Most fasting advice you've seen online was tested on men. That's the reality. If you're a woman trying to fast for longevity, weight loss, or better focus, you gotta stop scrolling. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, this is the one challenge uh, and one big change that I would make that would determine whether you fast uh, and whether you should fast and whether fasting actually heals you or if fasting burns you out, if fasting actually is not healthy for you at all. So in every major fasting study, where you look at cell metabolism or nature, even the early time restricted feeding trials, over 80% of the participants were male. So women were ultimately excluded because hormones were complicating the data, um, which is kind of funny, but in real life, hormones are actually the data. That's what we need to look at that. Uh, that's what we need to, to see. So this video ultimately will help you fix that and hopefully uh, help you see you know, between the lines of what you should actually be doing. So you don't need to fast harder as a woman. You need to fast smarter in rhythms with your biology or some women, they shouldn't even be fasting at all, okay? So I wanna talk about the biology problem. Um, what the fasting research actually looks into. So most fasting studies, again, they're done on men, not women. Female metabolism more sensitive to caloric and circadian stress, uh, which is one of the reasons why they do that. Women have tighter hypothalamic pituitary feedback back loops. And there's also um, an energy deficit quickly lowering GnRH, uh, which creates less estrogen and progesterone and ultimately creates a thyroid shutdown. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that uh, right now. The truth is uh, the female body evolved to protect fertility above all else. So when calories or nutrients drop too sharply when you're fasting, the hypothalamus senses danger. It ultimately slows the thyroid down and it can ultimately dial down reproductive hormones. So in a 2019 review uh, in the research um, uh, journal called Obesity, Dr. Krista uh, Vardy, she found that intermittent fasting lowered T3 thyroid hormone and estrogen in pre-menopausal women after only eight weeks. Another 2021 frontier in endocrinology analysis confirmed that women's cortisol levels rise faster than men's when fasting exceeded 16 hours. So it actually created stress on their bodies, um, especially uh, when they were already under stress. So when a woman says fasting makes me anxious or sleepy, uh, they're not necessarily weak. They're just wired differently, right? We can't look at it that way. So in, cl in clinical uh, observation, um, in my clinic and the, 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 all the patients I've worked with, the women who struggle the most are already juggling high stress situations. They don't get the best sleeps already. Their cortisol is high. Uh, their calories are, are typically lower or they're not optimal or they're getting you know, not, not the best calories. And ultimately this is a recipe for mitochondrial shutdown. So your body ultimately is not betraying you. It's literally protecting you when you go into fasting state and then you get all these symptoms. So how does fasting impact cortisol? How does it impact thyroid? How does it impact estrogen levels? Okay. Short fasts cause hormetic stressors, which is actually good. Uh, chronic long fasts create cortisol dominance and low thyroid conversion, which ultimately can be very problematic. And estrogen influences mitochondrial function and glucose metabolism. So every fast is a stress test. You know, if you do it right, it builds resilience, right? It's a hormetic stressor. A hormetic stressor is when you push uh, your body and it retaliates in a positive way. You don't want to push your body to the point where it retaliates in a, in a negative way, right? This is like resistance training. You know, you break down those muscle fibers and you rebuild them back the next day, right? If a scientist is looking at the muscle fibers right after you work out, they would say, oh my gosh, don't ever do that again. If you wait uh, 24 hours, they look at those muscle fibers again. They're like, oh my gosh, what did you do? Keep doing what you're doing, right? That's the same with fasting. So done right, it builds resilience. Done wrong, it breaks the circuit, right? Causes dysregulation. So when fasting extends too long, cortisol rises and it ultimately dysregulates blood sugar levels. It can raise anxiety, it can impair sleep, it can blunt 
thyroid conversion of T4 into T3. And that was shown in the Journal of Clinical Endoc Endocrinology uh, and Metabolism in 2018. Um, we know that low thyroid means colder hands, fatigue, hair loss, the clinical sides of metabolic shutdown. So estrogen adds another twist, okay? So it supports mitochondrial respiration uh, and insulin sensitivity, estrogen does, but during low estrogen phases like the luteal phase or postpartum, right? Or when you're in menopause, fasting tolerance drops. So that's why a woman's uh, um, best fasting rhythm or cycle changes across different phases of life. Fasting should be something that should bring health and vitality, right? Not collapse your health and vitality. The next point I wanna make is when to fast, right? There's cyclical specific recommendations. Um, there's even fasting strategies in menopause I'm gonna get into. So the follicular phase, day one to 14, your estrogen is typically higher, that's better uh, glucose control. It's really the best uh, window for fasting. The luteal phase, which is days 15 to 28, which is where you have progesterone dominance, um, you've got higher energy needs uh, and shorter fast or even skipping fasts altogether is, is better in that phase. And ultimately menopause, where you've got low at lower estrogen levels, higher stress activity uh, on the body, um, you use circadian fasts, like 12 to 14 hour fast, not chronic restrictions that can cause major issues. So if you're still, uh, if you still have your cycle, bio, your biology is essentially giving you a built-in calendar. So in the first half of the follicular phase, estrogen rises, right? Insulin sensitivity improves, like I said, and the mitochondria are just humming. This is your green light window for longer fasts from 14 to 16 hours, okay? Some people, again, as I stated at the beginning of this video, if you're dealing with stress, if you're consuming a conventional diet, if you aren't getting good sleeps, if you're you know, having challenges in that respect and you go in and fast um, and, and, and you do that for multiple days and you're still feeling bad, that's when you're like, okay, maybe this isn't something that's for me. Typically, anybody that starts a fast initially is not gonna feel normal. They're going to feel a little bit grumpy or you're going to have dysregulation in your neurotransmitters. So I think it's essential and important um, to just test and be a, a guinea pig for yourself. And this will help you understand whether it's, it's going to be good for you or not to do during the follicular phase or not. But once ovulation has passed, progesterone takes over, right? Your body needs more calories and magnesium. When you push fast in this particular time can really spike cortisol and cravings, right? During the luteal phase. So in 2022, in the Journal of Nutrients, they reviewed women who practice time-restricted eating only in the follicular phase. And what they found is it improved glucose markers without increasing cortisol. And for uh, menopausal women, uh, we flipped the strategy. We kept uh, fast shorter from 12 to 14 hours, but consistently and paired with resistance training and a protein anchored meal, it was absolutely amazing what it did. So menopause isn't a stop sign for fasting. It's a recalibration of how you want to fast, right? And again, the best kind of uh, a doctor is your own body. It's your own physiology. So tap into that and listen, I hate all these you know, uh, um, shock and awe podcasts that are out there that says fasting's killing women, right? Uh, it can, it can actually destroy uh, women's hormones and, and cause accelerated aging, right? But then when you're understanding the nuance of fasting, like we're getting into in this video, right? It, it, there's there's something that, that, that that's even better and that can help you elevate your understanding of what to do. So again, stable rhythms matter more than extreme fasts. So. The goal that I would have for you is to sync your fasts with your cycle. So, um, you know, ultimately don't just listen to the podcasts, <laughs> uh, listen to the signs and listen to your body. So the fifth point that I want to make in this video is whether we should do, sh should be doing short or long fasts. what works better, uh, and, and, and what works better for whom, right? And so some of the key points on this section is we want to do 
12 to 14 hour day fast. That helps with longevity activation pathways, insulin sensitivity. A 24 hour to 36 hour fast can boost autophagy and really help women heal and develop stress resilience uh, inside of them. 48 hours or longer prolonged fast, you know, that are typically under the supervision of clinically, um, um, you know, uh, gifted individuals. Uh, may reduce lean mass, which is not good, uh, and thyroid function, which is why you would probably want to be consuming some amino acids during the fast to maintain lean body tissue while you're working out and things of that nature. So let's um, you know let's let's define the spectrum of fasting. You've got 12 to to 14 hour fasts. Your overnight circadian fasts are great to improve metabolic health in both sexes. Cell metabolism 2021 showed better glucose and blood pressure control with an early eating window, right? 24 hour fasts once weekly can deepen autophagy, uh, which is the recycling of old proteins and mitochondria in the body and even the cells, which is really good. But when you go beyond the 48 hour fast regularly, you risk uh, essentially this, this term called or when you activate rhabdomyolysis or muscle wasting is where you lose your lean body tissue uh, and even your thyroid health, especially for women with lower muscle mass. So this is a problem. And when you lose your muscle, it's hard to gain it back. Okay. Especially if you're in perimenopause or menopause. So remember autophagy is triggered by intensity, right? Not by suffering. <laughs> so you can build it with exercise. You can build autophagy with heat. You can, you can activate autophagy with, with cryotherapy, which is another conversation for women later on. A lot of women can't handle cryotherapy and cold plunges and things of that nature. A lot of women love it. I just got back from St. Andrews, Scotland, and there's a whole movement of women going into the ocean in the winter and cold plunging, right? So the other thing that can stimulate autophagy is polyphenols. So it's not just starvation. So you don't earn longevity by starving yourself. You earn it by signaling renewal, right? And, and ultimately being in a state of observation of what your body is telling you is working and what's not. Point number six I wanna make is detoxification and mitochondrial support during fasting. So if you're gonna fast, fasting ultimately mobilizes fat storage, which can mobilize toxins because that's where a lot of the toxins lay. Um, it supports liver pathways in phase one, two, uh, detoxification pathways with sulfur food and hydration. And if you do that during fasting, that can be very, very beneficial. And the mitochondria needs support during fasting. Coenzyme Q10, N-acetylcysteine, alpha linoleic acid are really good things to consume during a fast. So fasting ultimately frees up stored fat. So um, everything that's, that's, that's inside that stored fat that's hiding in it, oftentimes are chemicals or toxins that are endocrine disruptors, right? And even sometimes heavy metals are released. So as fat breaks down your liver and your mitochondria, they have to handle that cleanup. So a study in 2022 in the journal Toxins, they found fasting temporarily increases circulating BPA and phthalates in women before excretion. So this is the proof that detox is real but it needs support. I always tell clients, fast lightly, detox deeply, use lemon, salt water, cruciferous vegetables and electrolytes between the meals, and add mitochondrial allies like coenzyme Q10, N-acetylcysteine, alpha lipoic acid to buffer oxidative stress while fat is releasing from your body. So you don't just burn fat, okay? You clean the fire, you, 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 you support your body as you are fasting. So. Uh, point number seven is hydration and supplement strategies. So women, they lose more sodium during fasting and exercises than men. We have to add electrolytes like sodium, potassium, magnesium back in your water or in your food. And light caffeine can be okay, but we need to avoid artificial sweeteners. And it's optional uh, for you to be on amino acids or collagen in the luteal phase. It could be very beneficial for you. In fact, I recommend it. So hydration is your fasting insurance, right? Uh, women that, that dehydrate faster than men, um, you know, and most of them do, and that's because estrogen affects renal 
uh, uh, sodium balances. So one liter of water and a pinch of sea salt, you squeeze a little bit of lemon and you consume that every, every few hours. This adds magnesium glycinate uh, uh, you know, to your water. Uh, and, and when you add magnesium to your water at night in particular, uh, it can prevent sleep disruption. Uh, a Journal of Applied Physiology trial showed in 2020 that women maintain better cognitive function during a 14 hour fast when electrolytes were balanced. And during the luteal phase or menopause, adding five to 10 grams of collagen peptides or essential amino acids, my favorite product is Perfect Aminos. They won't break essentially your fast. It won't cause you to go out of your fast, but it will actually protect your muscles uh, from, from muscle wasting and it'll actually help to calm hunger. So it can be a very good tool uh, for smart fasting. So I hope you can see the power of integrating all of these different things to support your mitochondria, to boost your intake in electrolytes and peptides and amino acids during the fast. So if you're breaking your fast, you're ultimately refocusing and refueling your focus. So integration, the new science of fasting and female hormone regulation during fast. Here's the bottom line, is fasting works differently for women. It's not as consistent, right? A beneficial tool that, that can help you like it can for men. Uh, it's not a constant. Uh, uh, it's not something that uh, women should be beating their chest and being like, this is a contest of willpower. It's a conversation with your biology. So short, rhythm rhythmic fast sync to hormones, uh, enhance insulin sensitivity, mitochondrial renewal and autophagy without draining your adrenals or your thyroid reserves. So the smartest longevity protocol now emphasizes metabolic flexibility. This is something that you want to, to focus on. This is something that I should create another video on. Uh, it's not consistent deprivation. So when your mitochondria, your hormones, your nervous system are in harmony, fasting becomes what is what it's meant to be. It's essentially a reset, not like a punishment to your to your body. So you don't need to essentially shrink your body through fasting to live longer. You need to sink your body. You need to optimize nutrients in order to live healthy and long. So here's my call to action for you. If this has helped you to see fasting differently, share it with other women in your circle who are struggling with fatigue or plateaus. This, alt this video probably, I would just throw it out there and say it's one of the most advanced fasting education videos for women because of the nuance of fasting and how you can ultimately work with your body and use the messaging system inside of your body to, to fast in a healthy and vibrant way moving forward. So try a 12 to 14 hour fast, a circadian fast that, uh, that th this week, sunrise to sun, sunset, sunset to sunrise, excuse me, and notice how your energy shifts. And in the next episode, I'm gonna share how you can pair essentially fasting with mitochondrial supportive nutrition uh, to reverse biological age markers. And remember, longevity isn't just built on restriction, it's built on rhythm, it's built on nutrition uh, and, and the respect for your biology. So fasting isn't just about skipping meals, it's about listening to your body in the seasons of life that it is in. Are you in perimenopause? Are you in menopause? Are you in the beginning of your cycle? Are you in the end of your cycle, your follicular phase or your luteal phase? And so if you are in your follicular phase, you can go to town on fasting. If you're in your luteal phase, that's where you wanna be uh, careful. So when women align with their hormonal rhythms, they gain energy, they gain clarity, and ultimately they gain longevity, not burnout. Fasting and in, 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 in ultimately syncing fasting with your hormones, not against them, is the way to go because females uh, are, are, are all about understanding how to not just take the research that's all male dom dominant, but understand the nuances of clinical uh, um, integrations. So go ahead, click that subscribe button, click that bell button. And um, if you like to share this with one of your friends, and I look forward to adding more uh, uh, value to you in the future. Thank you so much.